into the world. And tell every man that you meet, there is a man on the cross. A Catholic take. What you need to know right now. A bold synthesis of inspiration and information. Keeping you up to date on the news and issues from a courageous Catholic perspective. A Catholic Take with Joe McLean starts now. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and you have survived it. You made it to the week, the weekend. Praise be to God. It is Friday. Just imagine what you get to accomplish now. The honeydew list, oh, mowing the lawn, fixing that thing you promised for the last six months you're going to fix. You get to get on it. So congratulations to you there. But we are going to have a great show for you today on this uh, Friday, February the 10th, 2023, Memorial of St. Scholastica Virgin. Also on the program today, Steve Carlin, 40 Days for Life campaign director of North America, because is going to be on to talk about abortion drugs being offered in your local corner store pharmacy. These are drugs that are in demand right now. In fact, 2020 data from 2020 showed that half of the abortions administered in the U.S. were medication abortions, not at the local clinic, but rather in the home behind closed doors. And these are deadly things. We're going to have that conversation with Steve Carlin coming up at 15 past the hour. At 30 past the hour, my good friend Gabriel Castillo, a Catholic evangelist. His uh, YouTube channel is Gabby After Hours. You should check it out. He's an amazing evangelist. Incredible, beautiful work that he does on his YouTube channel. And he is here to talk about the power of the Holy Rosary to not just save your life, but talk about bringing back lost loved ones to transform society. Well, we have a little bit of a Lenten challenge for you coming up at 30 past the hour. Before I forget and go too much further, do me a favor and subscribe to a Catholic Take podcast. You can find the podcast on our website, thestationofthecross.com. You can also find the podcast on our mobile app at the uh, iCatholic Radio mobile app. Download that in your iOS or Android app store today. And if you listen on like Apple or Google Play, leave us a review. A five-star review on the Apple store would be just an amazing gift that you could give to the Station of the Cross today. So look for a Catholic Take in your podcast directory subscribe and share that with a friend i would be so very grateful to you let's pray let's begin in the name of the father the son and the holy ghost amen remember O most gracious virgin mary that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection implored thy help or sought thine intercession was left unaided inspired by this confidence i fly unto thee O virgin of virgins my mother to thee do i come before thee i stand sinful and sorrowful O mother of the word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now your headlines, or rather, we're going to start with the saint of the day. And this is one of my favorite saints, I would have to say. He's definitely up on, he's like top 10, top 10. Saint Jose Sanchez del Rio, born on the 28th of March, 1913 in Michoacan de Ocampo in Mexico. At the age of 13, the boy became a flag bearer in the Cristero Army who was fighting to remain Catholic in the face of Freemason anti-religious government decrees. His two older brothers were soldiers, but no one would let young Jose become a frontline soldier. And so he volunteered. He did whatever they asked him, clean rifles, clean out stalls, cook clean, whatever, didn't matter. And then he got the opportunity to be a flag bearer and he took it, but he was captured by government troops and he was imprisoned. They had taken over a church they turned the sacristy into his jail cell and they kept him there for seven days and they uh, tortured him while they desecrated the, the sanctuary the whole time. St. Uh, Jose snuck out, killed the chickens. They were using fighting chickens there in the sanctuary. He killed all of them. And uh, they're like, why did you do that? Because this is a house of God. This, this little kid stood up to these uh, soldiers. It was so amazing. They mutilated him and they ordered to re him to renounce Christianity. But every single time they tried, he would just say, Viva Cristo Rey. He was hacked with machetes, stabbed with bayonets, and finally shot on the 10th of February, 1928. His body is interred in the Church of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And he was uh, canonized on the 21st of January, 2016. Pope Francis promulgated a decree 
of a miracle received through the intercession of Blessed Jose. 13 years old. At 13 years old, would we be so brave at our age, let alone 13? What a story. St. Jose Sanchez del Rio, pray for us. And now your headline news. The Pillar reports Pittsburgh Diocese to regulate ad orientum masses. The Diocese of Pittsburgh is set to implement a new policy that will require priests to seek the bishop's permission if they wish to celebrate the ordinary form of the Mass, that is the Novus Ordo, at Orientum, that is facing liturgically east. The celebration of the Mass at Orientum is not regulated by Traditionis Custodis, a 2021 policy promulgated by Pope Francis to govern a different liturgical reality, the extraordinary form of the Mass, sometimes called the traditional Latin Mass. So even though it doesn't have anything to do with it, still, they're going to regulate it. Let that sink in. Fox News reports Gates introduces resolution to end military and financial aid to the Ukraine and urge a peace deal. The resolution, the Ukraine Fatigue Resolution, is being introduced by Gates and 10 co-sponsors and calls for the U.S. to end its military and financial aid to Ukraine and urges all combatants to reach a peace agreement. The resolution notes that since Russia invaded Ukraine in February 2022, the U.S. has been the top contributor to the Ukraine war effort with more than 10, 110, $110 billion in financial, military, and humanitarian aid to the U.S., our aid to Ukraine. That includes $27.4 billion in security assistance. Yeah, I think it's time to cut that off. The Free Beacon reports second Republican New Jersey lawmaker shot dead within a week. Milford Councilman Russell Heller, who also works as a supervisor at a utility company, was gunned down in a parking lot outside his office on Wednesday by a former employee. Last Wednesday, uh, Councilwoman Eunice Dumfor was killed by an unidentified gunman outside her home in what police called a targeted attack. Heller's killer was later found dead from a suspected self-inflicted gunshot wound. Heller, a father of one, has served as councilman in Hunterdon County since 2017. Heller was killed less than 15 miles from where Councilwoman Dunford was found dead in her SUV with multiple gunshot wounds. Her killer is still at large. Life News reports police arrest a Catholic priest for silently praying outside an abortion clinic. UK-based Father Sean Goh stood silently holding a praying for free speech sign near a closed abortion facility to protest recent cases of bogus arrest. For peacefully supporting free speech within the censorship zone, Father Sean Goh was charged with intimidating service users of the abortion facility. This was despite the fact that this all happened while the facility was closed and nobody was there. They still arrested him. And those are your headline news. Your gospel today comes to you from Mark chapter 7, verses 31 through 37. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hands on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd and he put his finger into the man's ear and spitting touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pseudo-Jerome, which means it was, you know, they thought it might have been Jerome, but it turns out it wasn't Jerome. It was writing around Jerome's time that they couldn't identify the author. Pseudo-Jerome says, Further, he who obtains healing is always drawn aside from turbulent thoughts, disorderly actions, and incoherent speeches. And the fingers which are put into the ears are the words and the gifts of the Holy Ghost, of whom it is said... This is the finger of God. The spittle 
is heavenly wisdom, which loosens the sealed lips of the human race so that it can say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, and the rest of the creed. And looking up to heaven, he groaned. That is, he taught us to groan, to raise up the treasures of our hearts to the heavens, because by the groaning of hearty compunction, the silly joy of the flesh is purged away. But the ears are open to hymns and songs and psalms, and he loosens the tongue that it may pour forth the good word, which neither threats nor stripes can restrain. Close quote, pseudo Chrysostom, or pseudo Jerome, rather. Hadock's commentary says they besought him. In the Greek, it is they beseech him, which agrees so well with they bring. Now, I wanted to point this out because it is the faith of others that can often bring us to the Lord. So, if you have lost loved ones, how often do you besiege the Lord? Do you bring them to the Lord? Do you have that zealousness, that ardentness to to hold the line, to never give up, to constantly pray on behalf of them? Because the faith of a righteous person availeth much, we are told. Augustine says, if, however, he, as one who knew the present and the future wills of men, knew that they would proclaim him the more in proportion as he forbade them, why did he give them this command? If it were not that he wished to prove to men who were idle, how much more joyfully, with how much greater obedience, they whom he commands to proclaim him should preach when they who are forbidden could not hold their peace. Yet how much do we hold our tongues in proclaiming the Lord? How much do we use our tongues to to espouse profanity, to degrade others? Let us use our tongue to not just lift up, but to give joyful praise unto the Lord. Don't go anywhere. On the other side of the break, Steve Carlin, campaign director, 40 Days for Life, is going to be talking about abortion drugs in your neighborhood pharmacy. All that's coming up next. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. And uh, by the way, I'm going to be in Buffalo, New York, coming up on the 22nd of February, and we're doing an open house. The studio is going to be open. If you want to come hang out with us at the studio, I would invite you to that for the live broadcast of A Catholic Take. Uh, It's going to be a great time. You can contact the station. Go to thestationofthecross.com. Give us a call. Call Colin at the station if you want more information. Again, find all the information uh, to uh, contact the station and ask about that RSVP today. Go to thestationofthecross.com. Gabriel Castillo is going to be on with us at 30 past the hour, but joining us right now by telephone is Steve Carlin, Campaign Director for 40 Days for Life in North America. Steve, good morning to you. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Praise be to God. We're grateful to you. Uh, the FDA is authorizing abortion pills in our neighborhood pharmacies. Now, this comes at a time when abortion pills uh, are the predominant means by which women receive or take uh, advantage of abortion. And they also are very, you know, dangerous medications, to say the least. And they're increasing in demand. So what is going on here? Well, I think this is just continuing backlash from the overturning of Roe v. Wade. The abortion industry was not prepared for Roe v. Wade, which has really been sort of a protection racket, if you will, for them for almost 50 years. It's gone, and now we're seeing a lot of desperation moves. And and the latest of those is to authorize the the local corner pharmacy to hand out abortion pills right through the drive through window. So it's kind of a desperation move, and it comes right at the same time as we're receiving word of yet another woman who has died after using the abortion pill. This was a Canadian woman who went into septic shock after using the abortion pill. Uh, you know, Planned Parenthood always tries to cover up deaths after abortions take place. And, you know, they, they, they're very hush-hush about all the safety problems, the complications, the injuries. And I, I think that we'll see CVS and Walgreens and Rite Aid pharmacies. I, I don't think they're even having this discussion in their upper-level management, but it's going to be a difficult situation for them when the next woman who, who dies as a result of the abortion pill could be, a, you know, one of their customers. I, I don't think they're having that conversation when they make these decisions. Now, this is the same medications that we saw used in the film on Abby Johnson? Yeah, it is. It is. And I think you know, if someone hasn't seen the film Unplanned, there's no better testimony on what the abortion pill is. 
This is America. We've got a pill for everything. And, you know, it sounds like a, like a dream solution. You've got a crisis pregnancy. You can pay a few hundred dollars and have your your biggest fear go away. But as we saw in Unplanned, uh, the abortion pill is, is not complication free. Even when it works uh, as designed without complication, the side effects are miserable. It is painful. It is messy. It is very disturbing. And uh, it's, it's, it's not a good thing for American women. This isn't a scenario where, you know, as we see so often the abortion industry pitting mothers against their babies, this is a scenario where abortion, abortion pills harm them both and life is a solution that's good for them both that was the most intense scene in the whole movie in my opinion was that one scene in unplanned where abby was being uh was going through her own abortion experience through these these two uh, drugs that you're that they sent to you that they mailed to you and for years planned parenthood has been into america's schools trying to um, set it up so that these kids could receive these. And now, I mean, I think there's an opportunity in some states for teenagers to receive these drugs. Uh, almost no questions asked. How much of a gatekeepers are, are going to be CVS and Rite Aid and some of these pharmacies that are offering these drugs? Are they going to have to check IDs? Will kids have to have parents' permissions? I mean, how is all that going to work? Well, here's the irony of it all, which is that the unplanned film got an R rating because of that scene. And so you would see teenagers who perhaps couldn't even get into the movie to see what the aftermath of a chemical abortion looks like. And now they're going to be able to go get it on their own. And I think you're absolutely right. This is an interesting scenario because Walgreens and CVS in particular are just coming out of like a billion dollar settlement for their contribution to the opioid crisis, just handing out opioids like candy on Halloween. And now we've got a scenario again where we're going to see the same thing with abortion pills. And there are going to be cases where, you know, the boyfriend gets a hold of them and slips the the abortion pill in the drink. We're going to have situations where the parents uh, find their daughter hemorrhaging and didn't even know she had taken the abortion pill. So there's there's a lot of a lot of things that could go very, very wrong with this. Do we know uh, how wide of an effect? How 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 many is this the entire country that's affected here? Is this just New York? I know New York is very concerned at this point about these uh, drugs being offered in their neighborhoods, but uh, how, how many states are, are affected by this? Is this the whole country? So that is still remains to be seen. Right now, CVS, Walgreens, Rite Aid, they're in the process of getting certified to, to distribute these abortion drugs. And so it would seem very likely that the states where abortion remains legal after the overturning of Roe v. Wade that the pharmacies in those states will be impacted by this decision from the FDA. The FDA has gone so far as to suggest that uh, their authority should trump even the pro-life states, the Texas, the Oklahoma's, the Alabama's, the Idaho's. And uh, I think that'll be, it'll take some time to to work its way through the courts. Well, 40 Days for Life has had a stunning uh, career, let's just say, uh, in pushing back over these many years. And uh, we've already seen some of the fruit of some of that labor in places like Texas. You mentioned Texas a minute ago. And uh, abortion in Texas has been pretty much wiped out uh, over the last few years. And this has been a good thing. So this would be this would be a major problem for that effort. It would, but at the same time, it's not unexpected. I, I think we sometimes see this backlash that's happened post row. And uh, I even talked to some pro-lifers who were like, I don't even know if it's a good thing that Roe was overturned. And I want to assure everybody, it is a very good thing that Roe was overturned. We knew that there were challenges. You know, when you watch a movie about some sort of triumph over a, a civil rights abuse, whether it be slavery or Jim Crow, you know, you've got the long struggle and then you've got the victory and the, the whole aftermath of how it takes months or years or even decades to completely solve the problem is kind of summed up in the, the closing credits of the movie. Well, we're now in that post-row struggle. It's not going to be easy. It was never going to be easy, but we're in a better position than we've ever been before. We're seeing the number of abortions go down. The number of abortion, uh, the number of births is going up. Uh, there's highlights. Uh, abortion is being highlighted in the public discourse. It can no longer be hidden the way that it used to be hidden. And when we talk about abortion as a country, even when it's difficult, even when we get pushback from the president, from the media, from big tech, when abortion is in the conversation, lives are saved. So we, we've, again, I don't want to be Pollyanna about it. We've got our work cut out for us, but the biggest obstacle in our path to ending abortion has been removed. And so we should, we should be focusing on that in many ways. Okay, so if, if the shift is moving towards these drugs, 
rather than uh, a woman showing up at a clinic and receiving an abortion that way. If it's moving towards, you can just go to your local pharmacy, you can get it there, or in some cases, you can text them and have it mailed to you. Um, how do you shift the effort to raise awareness? I mean, 40 Days for Life, we, we pray out in front of clinics. We have a physical presence there. We're praying for doctors and nurses and the janitor and the abortion uh, escort guys who pick fights with with uh, pro-life activists like my friend Mark Houck. You know, that's, uh, that's, that's been a very effective solution over these last years. But how do we shift? What do we do different now when they're doing it in the privacy of their own home? How do we help save those lives? Well, we're doing something that we've never done before, which is holding 40 days for life vigils in front of these abortion dispensing pharmacies. And I think there's challenges to it all, but there are also opportunities here because while the workers at Planned Parenthood are trained and they're prepared, and in many cases they're they're pro-abortion ideologues, they're ready for the pushback that they get in the presence in front of the facilities, I don't think that the pharmacies are going to be prepared. And I think there are a number of weaknesses in this plan. When, when a 40 days for life vigil shows up outside the Walgreens, for example, is the pharmacist going to be willing to distribute those abortion drugs or will the, the conscience of the community, which is the, the, comes in the form of the pro-lifers on the sidewalk, will that help them find their voice and their courage to say no? And when it, we, my local Walgreens is cut back its hours, there's a, an employment crisis, there's not enough workers to go around, how does the middle manager at the, uh, at the pharmacy uh, handle staffing? How do they handle the PR issue when there are pro-lifers coming in and complaining to the 17-year-old working the checkout counter? These are all weak points that I think, I, I think CVS and Walgreens would like to think that this problem is just going to go away for them, but they're going to have a PR nightmare on their hands because even people who describe themselves as pro-choice don't want to go get their birthday card or their liter of soda or their, you know, headache medicine in a place that is handing abortion pills out the drive through window. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. I'm glad to see that that's happening. Praise be to God. Can I ask you a question? So in, in light of Mark Houck's case, uh, and praise be to God, he was exonerated of all charges of face act violations uh, when he got into that incident with the escort for Planned Parenthood there last year. Um, have you seen a decline or has there been any effect uh, in regards to people coming out and praying at 40 Days for Life campaigns or coming, being willing to come out in front of abortion clinics? Have the, have the, the faithful, I'm going to call them faithful because I know that not everybody's Catholic and I was Christian even, but uh, it's, uh, it's an all hands on deck effort. But nonetheless, have the people come out in, in less numbers? Are they more afraid or has nothing been changed whatsoever? I don't think there's been a a deterrence from participation in 40 Days for Life. And I think that's especially the case right now in the wake of this exoneration, because Mark was charged. He was facing time in prison. We came to his aid right away. The Thomas More Society, others came to his aid right away. And we said from the beginning, these charges are ridiculous and they are going to be defeated. And that's exactly what happened. And I think what pro-lifers are seeing, even if they were perhaps a little bit nervous or had some trepidation about going onto the sidewalk in the wake of the FBI raid on Mark's house. This shows the system works. Our justice system came through for us. And I I think that we'll see the FBI and the DOJ a little more reluctant to pull this sort of stunt in the future. It's not a Mm 50-50 matter when you go to trial with the feds. They win more than 95% of their cases. And the fact that they lost this one is a real sign that something was wrong with this prosecution. Yeah. Yeah. So what do you recommend? What do you what would you tell parents right now who are looking at this going, golly, you is, you know, my daughter, my daughter's friends at school could now walk into a CVS uh, in the not so distant future or a Rite Aid or a Walgreens or whatever. And without even our knowledge of this, be able to obtain these drugs. And who knows, not only is the abortion wrong, but it could also kill their daughters. This is a very serious thing. What should they do about this? What what calls to action can we offer them? I think we've got to be involved in our children's medical decisions. While these pills are going to be available at the corner pharmacy, they still require a prescription. This isn't over the counter. And so we've gotten more and more reports of, you know, you bring your daughter or your son in for a a physical and the doctor says, okay, mom, dad, you've got to leave the room here. No, these are our children. This is not children of the system. These are not children of the state. These are our children. And I think, I think just 
being good parents, as hopefully all Catholic and Christian parents are striving to be, be involved in the decision making medically. Uh, I don't know that there's a way to foolproof it, but I think you know when we take that active role in our children's lives, we're going to be able to prevent a lot of the, the dangers that are posed by this decision from the FDA. Amen. Steve Carlin, so grateful for your time, North American Campaign Director, 40 Days for Life, 40daysforlife.com. That's 40daysforlife.com. Steve, thank you for your time. We appreciate your insight into this matter. Thank you. All right. Praise be to God. Don't go anywhere. We're going to go to break. We're going to come back. I have more breaking news and stories for you. And Gabriel Castillo from the YouTube channel Gabby After Hours is our guest. We're talking about the power of the Holy Rosary to transform society, to transform your life and your lost loved ones. Plus a challenge for you. All that's coming up next on A Catholic Take. Don't go anywhere. We're going to be right back. Praise be to Jesus Christ. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McLean, and here are your headline news. Life News reports Wyoming House passes bill banning abortions, affirming life begins at conception. Praise be to God. Maybe we should all move to Wyoming. Sounds good to me. Fox News reports staggering Turkey earthquake death toll includes at least three U.S. citizens. More than 19,300 people have died in Turkey and in Syria from the earthquake. Three American citizens have been confirmed dead in southeastern Turkey following the devastating 7.8 magnitude earthquake that rocked the country and Syria this week. We have to continue to pray for everyone involved. The Red State reports Senator John Fetterman still hospitalized, being monitored for seizure. Fetterman was taken into the hospital by a staffer Wednesday evening after he felt lightheaded during a Democratic Senate retreat in Washington, D.C., an event that was barely covered by the mainstream media. The Pennsylvania senator remains hospitalized at George Washington University Hospital Thursday night and is being monitored with an EEG for signs of seizure, according to a statement released by his office. The Daily Wire reports FBI headquarters purges leaked intelligence document targeting radical traditionalist Catholics. FBI whistleblower Kyle Serafin says the document first published in Undercover D.C. specifically points to racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists in radical traditionalist Catholic ideology. Through tripwires and liaisons, which are trusted contacts, Serafin noted, the FBI can deploy threat mitigation against such groups ahead of the next election. A spokesperson for the FBI told the Daily Wire in an email that the Bureau began removing the document from its system after learning about it. Nonetheless, it was real and it's a thing and it's just getting worse. And we had Kyle Serafin on just the other day. You might remember that. You should catch the podcast of that incredible conversation when he reveals the details of this memo that the FBI had in its possession. You can find that at the thestationofthecross.com. Look, look for the A Catholic Take podcast. Make sure to subscribe to it too, especially on the iCatholic Radio mobile app, which you can download in your iOS or Android app store. And that, those are your headline news. Praise be to God. Joining us now by phone is Gabriel Castillo, incredible Catholic evangelist. He has a, a few YouTube channels, but one of them is Gabby After Hours. Highly, highly recommend all of his content, wherever it may live, especially on YouTube. It's beautiful, it's inspirational, and it's effective. And he joins us now. Good morning to you, Gabriel Castillo. Good morning, Joe. It's great to be on your new radio program, A Catholic Take. It's an honor. Praise be to God. Yeah, we're glad you're here. Thanks for uh, thanks for hanging out with us today. Now, let's talk about the power of the Holy Rosary. You know, one of the probably the most common. I want to start here. The most one of the most common yes. prayer requests that, that I've ever heard in my almost 20 years of working full time in Catholic evangelization has been uh, to help bring back lost loved ones. Especially as I get older, yeah. I've got grandkids now. Uh, so I'm, you know, people my age, you know, they, they're looking at their adult children and they're very concerned. They want their kids to come back. And one of the, one of the pieces of advice that I always give is the power of the Holy Rosary. Talk to us about yeah. the power of the Holy Rosary. Absolutely. A hundred percent. But before we can briefly, I just want to summarize quickly. What is the goal of the Virgin Mary? The primary goal of the Virgin Mary is to make people like her son, Jesus Christ. The goal of Christianity is union with Christ 
the goal of the Virgin Mary is to make Christ with, by and through the powerful intercession of the Holy Spirit. The goal of the Virgin Mary is also to make her children like herself so that they can be most pleasing to Christ. Why do I start off with that? Because you asked the question about conversion. The Virgin Mary wants conversion infinitely more than you and I want the conversion of our own children. She views our children as her children because it cost her, her son on the cross, in order to call us my child, my son, my daughter. And in addition to that, she's the mediatrix of all grace, and so she has the grace to bring about that conversion rapidly. So that brings us to the rosary. What is the goal of the rosary? Often we say that the rosary is our weapon, and that is true. It does battle back the powers of hell. It does that. But more importantly, it's Our Lady's favorite tool for turning people into Christ and turning people into her. That's why the rosary is what? It's a meditation. What does Our Lady do more than anything else in the Bible? She ponders things in her heart. What did she ponder the most? The incarnation. Jesus becoming God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, becoming the Word in flesh, in her womb. When the, and this is going to shock a lot of people. Most people don't actually pray what Our Lady originally intended when she appeared to St. Dominic and gave the rosary. And that's why most people do find the, bore, the rosary boring and repetitious. And to some degree, it is. Uh, objectively, you're repeating the same thing over and over again. But what you should not find the rosary as ineffective. The rosary is mm. powerful. I've seen massive conversions, huge conversions of entire families. And in as little as six months, I, I spoke to a woman six months ago about her, and she's a young woman, and her, her parents were splitting up. All of her brothers have left the church. Her mother was abusive and cursing at everybody and in ridiculing the faith. I talked to her and I said, do you want to save your family? And she said, yes. I was like, then you're going to have to die to yourself. Take up the entire rosary as the Virgin Mary willed it, and you will see that grace is going to flow into your family through you. Six months later, I said, hey, call your mom. Encourage her to pray the rosary. Things are, if, if you think things aren't going well, and she didn't want to talk about this with her mother because things were sensitive at home. She called her mom to tell her, hey, there's problems at the home. You're the mom. The children are in trouble. You need to really step it up as the hierarchical structure. You start praying. Dad will start praying, etc." She calls her mom, mom, to tell her to pray the rosary. Her mom says, oh, I've been watching these videos on YouTube. God be after hours. I, I'm thinking of praying the entire rosary every day. And her, she, this girl was shocked. What? You're, you're watching God be after hours? You're watching this YouTube? And then so the, the, the push to pray the entire rosary was very simple. And just yesterday she told me that her mom went to confession, her dad went to confession, her youngest brother went to confession, all within the time of six months. And this family was hopeless. But now let's, let's go quickly to the origins of the rosary because that's very important. When the Virgin Mary appeared to St. Dominic, St. Dominic was praying and fasting and doing mortifications and penances to be able to find a weapon that would be so effective that all of the promises of the New Testament would come true. The promises of the New Testament that Jesus made are living water will flow through you. The, the world would be set on fire, and how I wish it was already ablaze. Conversion of sinners, this is why St. Dominic was really praying. He was a preacher, but his word was ineffective against the Albigensians. So he offered himself to a victim soul to the Virgin Mary, and the Virgin Mary, after several days of him praying and doing penance, he fainted. The Virgin Mary appeared to him and said to him, Dominic, my well-beloved son, I am so pleased with you. In this type of warfare, it is a warfare, the battering ram is the angelic salutation. It has been and it will be forever. Briefly, what does that mean? Our Lord said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Often as Catholics, we think that that means we need to bunker down and hide from the culture. And maybe if we, the, the few remnant of us, if we're really good, we won't lose the faith. That's not what our Lord meant. Our Lord meant that we, me and you, can go to hell. We can break down the gates of hell. And wherever we go, where there was despair, there'll be hope. Wherever there was sin, there will be conversion. Wherever there is hatred of God, there'll be love of God. In our wake, when we break down the gates of hell, and the Virgin Mary is saying, the battering ram to break down those gates is Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. And if you think about it, the world was under the dominion of Satan. And what was it that broke down the gates of this world, that brought our Lord to this world, that brought hope into the darkest of dark? 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. So Our Lady tells Dominic, this is the battering ram. When you say these words, the Holy Spirit will come. When you say these words, every angel in heaven You'll have their attention. When you say these words, God the Father is going to smile upon you. When you say these words, my heart beats uh, with extra fervor because this is the moment that I pondered so often. And then she continues and says, preach my Psalter. Important words. Number one word in there is preach. Whenever St. Dominic began to preach the Psalter, conversions happened in his wake everywhere he went. Even little children began to do penances that were for adults, not that we should be pushing our children to be mortifiers, but they happened on its own. Wherever he preached this, there was conversion and miracles to confirm his preaching. But the most important word I want to focus on just briefly is the word Psalter. So important. At the time of St. Dominic, lay people would pray with beads because the religious would pray the Psalter, the Liturgy of the Hours. They'd pray in the morning, in the afternoon, and in the evening. 150 psalms there are. So Our Lady was saying, preach the version of the Psalter, the 150 of Hail Mary's. Preach my Psalter, meditating upon the life of Christ. This is the rosary as it was intended by St. Dominic. She made several promises to those who would do this, to Dominic and to Blessed Alan, and many other saints have promoted this. It is only in recent times that we have begun to pray only what St. Louis de Montfort called as a children's rosary, meaning five <laughs> decades. That is Ouch. not what Our Lady originally <laughs> planned. So if we don't have the fruit of it, if we don't have the fruit of these rosaries, it's because we're only praying, we're just getting, we're just, we're just pulling the sword out of the sheath and, and cleaning it up for battle. We haven't really begun to wield it. But when we begin mm-hmm. to wield it, wow, the fruits are incredible. But again, what is the goal of the Virgin Mary through the rosary? She makes extraordinary promises that we're going to cover briefly, but her desire for the rosary is to transform us into Christ, to transform us into her. And it's the perfect prayer. It's the key that unlocks every door. It unlocks the sacraments. It gets rid of the devil. If you have a diabolical obsession, which many Catholics do, if they've been addicted to pornography, they've invited the devil Mm -hmm. into their life. If they're on drugs, they've invited the devil into their life. And they think that maybe they need a psychiatrist when in fact, Maybe they do, but they also have the devil scratching at every weakness that they have. It will block that diabolical obsession. It will bring about the conversion of our families. It will increase in us the charismatic gifts that Jesus willed for us to have. It's like the Holy the Holy Spirit doesn't exist in the Catholic Church. Everybody's so bored and so lame when they proclaim the gospel. The Holy Spirit is so powerful. Jesus said, it is better that I go so that you can have the Holy Spirit. When you pray the rosary, the Holy Spirit's going to flow through you to have these in-depth conversations. When you pray the rosary, God's will will be fulfilled in your life. Why? What are the ingredients of the rosary? Number one ingredient is death to myself. We don't do God's will because we're too busy doing our own will, thinking our own thoughts. When you pick up that rosary, it is a death. It is a daily death. I'll be the first to admit I don't like to do it. I don't say, hey, I would rather in my free time pray the rosary rather than watching YouTube. It's not true. I would rather be watching YouTube and chilling and surfing the web. But the reality is when I pray the rosary, I die. Gabriel the selfish dies inside. And for about 15 minutes, I kill myself, Will. God begins to reveal his will to me. The power of the Virgin Mary becomes present. She becomes present in my life. And Our Lady's intention originally was to kill yourself spiritually, die to yourself in the morning, die to yourself in the afternoon, die to yourself in the evening, so that Christ may live in you. And this is what Jesus said, he who wishes to follow me must deny himself, take up his cross and follow me, so that he can do my will. Not everybody who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of God, but only he who does the will of my heavenly Father. So some of the things that she promised, if you'll do this, because she's a good mom, you know, she rewards us motivates us. She promised that anybody who prays the rosary faithfully every day shall receive signal graces, signs. When we're discerning things, St. Ignatius of Loyola tells us that we'll have consolations when when it's God's will. We'll be in desolation if the devil's tempting us. Mary is the crusher of the serpent. Maybe you're going through a long season of desolation and feeling far from God. Mary crushes that desolation. Mary is the spouse of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the consoler. Mary will intercede so that you have those consolations, not that we seek them, but we need them, like just to be a happy person, to have peace in our hearts. We need those consolations from the Holy Spirit. They're not bad to have. Mary is spouse of the consoler. She will make sure you receive those consolations. But this promise, promise number one, 
that Mary made to St. Dominic is you will have exterior signs. Not only are you discerning things in your heart, but God will give you confirmations in the present moment. We have a great break. opportunity. We're going to go to radio break, yes. That's right. We're going we're gonna to come to a break here right now, but we have a great opportunity to take full advantage of the graces and the, and the gifts that are promises that are made to us. I mean, the, 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 well, the wellspring of just so many graces overflows. And so why not take full advantage? So after this quick break, Gabriel Castillo from Gavi After Hours, I've linked to his YouTube channel and all of our feeds today. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Facebook. We're live streaming at Rumble, Twitter, LinkedIn, and other places. So make sure to look for a Catholic take or Joe McClain there. You'll find it or the Station of the Cross. But after the break, we have a challenge for you. The Linton Challenge. That's coming up next. Don't go anywhere. A Catholic take. And Gabriel Castillo is coming right back. We'll be right back. Share us with a friend. Welcome back to A Catholic Take, a bold synthesis of information and inspiration. I'm your host, Joe McClain. So good to be on with you. Coming up at the top of the hour, when we say goodbye to the radio, we stay on live video for a half hour of what we call the after show, where you can comment and interact directly. And uh, I would love to see you there, hang out with you and talk to you there. Just look for us on uh, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, Rumble. We're on LinkedIn. We're all, all kinds of places. The Station of the Cross, A Catholic Take, Joe McClain. You can search for us. Soon there'll be a web page that'll have all that linked up and I'll just send you there and it'll be easier. But nonetheless, Gabriel Castillo is our guest. Gabby After Hours is one of his YouTube channels. I cannot recommend it enough. It is just so amazing. And we're talking about the power of the Holy Rosary. Gabe, welcome back to the show. Um, let's talk about uh, a few more of those promises. Yes. Uh, what, what, yes. why would, why would, why would heaven incentivize us so much to pray this Psalter? Because the, the Psalter is so perfect that if we could just start praying it, everything in the spiritual life will begin to work in Christ's mission on the cross will begin to flourish throughout the world. Just a very few more promises. She promises special protection to all of those who shall recite the rosary. I think of John Paul II. He prayed the entire rosary every day. He was shot at St. Peter's Square on the Feast of Our Lady of Fatima in 1981. The bullet went straight. It was shot perfectly, but yet missed his vital organs. Our Lady promises anybody who prays the rosary will not perish and go to hell. Anybody who prays the rosary and considers the sacred mysteries... They won't be conquered by misfortune. And then my favorite promise, there's many more promises, but my favorite promise is this. The rosary shall be a powerful armor against hell. It will destroy vice. It will decrease sin. It will defeat heresies. And I'm going to give you a couple of examples of that. Now, today, there are four mysteries of the rosary. There's the joyful, there's the luminous added by John Paul II, the sorrowful, and the glorious. At the time of St. Dominic, when Our Lady made these promises, there were only three mysteries. Now, if anybody's never prayed the rosary, I would say start off with one, knowing that today that there's four. Many people just go with three. I say be oh, if you're praying three, if you're going from one, try three. If you're praying three, be open to the possibility of praying the fourth, the luminous. And I'll give you tips before we're, we're over about how to actually practically get this done, because the devil doesn't want you to get this, do this properly. So you might be doing it uh, in a way that might be more strenuous than necessary. But I will say from my experience, I'll tell you a couple of miracles that I've seen, a couple of conversions just in the past few weeks, because I'm seeing miracles and conversions on such a regular basis, but they are happening not at the three. I'm, a full disclosure, I'm, I'm open to miracles happening at three, but the majority of the miracles, all of the miracles, honestly, that I have seen have happened when somebody went from three rosaries to four rosaries. I don't want to get into the luminous mysteries and that wow. back and forth because there's simply not enough time. But just for example, there was a woman who prayed three rosaries every day. I ran into her at a, a church event and she said, I just started watching your videos. I was praying three rosaries. I had thighs in my eyes. I had ulcers. I had all sorts of stomach issues because of overwhelming stress. And just last week, I began to pray for, I made a resolution to pray for, and when I did, and I, at three days in, all my health issues went away. There's a man who lives under the bridge next to the seminary, 
And a seminarian friend of mine who had just began praying the four and fully resolved himself to pray the four went under that bridge, began to minister to the homeless there. There was a homeless man there who had cancer in his leg. The guy, the guy had never prayed a rosary before in his life. He said, I want to learn the rosary. And then this guy said, hey, if you, you've got cancer, you really need to try to pray for. And he had just made the resolution of praying for. He only prayed one that day. He made the resolution that he's going to try and pray for every day for the rest of his life. He went to the hospital. They checked his blood. They checked it again. They got several other doctors to come in. The doctor said, hey, what's happened? Your cancer is gone. What have you changed? And the guy, in full disclosure, he says, well, doc, I'm not going to lie. I'm still doing crack, but I have started to pray the rosary. All of his cancer is gone. I mentioned to you a young woman who had been praying. She she goes to the Latin Mass, so she only prays three rosaries because she didn't believe in the luminous at the time. Her family's falling apart. She's saying, Gabe, why isn't the rosary working? I said, try four. Try it for seven days. Just do it for seven days. And what happened? Six months later, three out of the six family members of her family are in confession, praying the entire rosary, going to daily Mass, and... She herself is becoming a saint because of it. She's now going to daily Mass. She's going to daily adoration because she started the prayer of the four rosaries. I met a woman just like two weeks ago. I got this email because I I was preaching a mission at St. John the Baptist Church in Alvin, and I didn't think it went very well because I just couldn't feel the crowd responding to what I was saying. But I got an email a week later. There was a woman there who had been praying for the conversion of her daughter. Her daughter was a drug addict. Her daughter was sneaking out of the house. And she sent me the email saying, this is not your ordinary testimony. She left the house that night. The daughter left the house at 2 a.m. with the mom not knowing. The mom woke up about 2.30 in a panic. She felt something was off. She went to the bedroom of the daughter. The daughter wasn't there. She got on her knees and prayed her four rosaries right then and there. But when she finished her fourth rosary, she heard a bang on the door. It was the police. The police took her to the emergency room because she said, your daughter's been in a terrible car accident and she's going to die. The daughter did die. The daughter did die. In this case, she did not see the conversion of her daughter. But when her daughter died, she said a great light came from the daughter, from her body. And she heard a voice very audibly. The the most beautiful voice she's ever heard said, your intercession has succeeded. The father has been merciful. She is with us. And she had just made the resolution. She did not see the conversion. And she heard the voice of the Virgin Mary said, The Father has been merciful. She is with us. And I don't doubt that for a second because the the change in her disposition, she had been a mother who was in anguish, now a mother full of consolation for having achieved her goal as a mother, the salvation of her child. That's the goal of every mother is to get their children to heaven. So the rosary will do that. But a few quick tips because you might say, well, how do I do it? Number one, you only need to pray the the Apostles' Creed one time. You don't have to pray the Apostles' Creed with every rosary because the Apostles' Creed is meant to be the introduction to this long journey through the life of Christ. Second tip, make a schedule for yourself. Say, I'm going to pray a rosary right when I wake up. I'll pray a rosary in the afternoon because what the devil will try to do is get you to say, hey, pray the rosary later. You're really busy right now. Another thing that you should keep in mind is don't be too scrupulous. The devil will try to tell people, and I've heard it before, they'll say, hey, man, you're not doing it well. This isn't your prayer. This isn't for you. It doesn't feel good. Pick something else that feels good. No, get it done. Say, get behind me, Satan. Good enough. And for when you're giving somebody a gift, it's better that you give them a gift. Maybe they deserve something really nice, but you can't afford to give them something really nice. It's better you honor them, at least by giving them the gift. Your best for the Virgin Mary is good enough. Don't be too scrupulous. The human mind can only do one thing at a time. So to think about the words or think about the mystery, just get it done. Through the prayer, Mary, the Holy Spirit will come down. Mary's spouse will will come to you and will help your prayer to be more pure. And finally, make a intention. You have to put a carrot before your nose. What is it that is so important to you? Whose soul is so important to you that at the end of the night, if you've fallen behind on your rosaries, that you're not going to lay down in bed, this intention is so heavy on your heart, you'll get on your knees or you'll sit in a chair upright and finish praying all of your rosaries for the day. Try it for seven days. My friend Joe McLean says this is a great opportunity to try it for Lent. Lent is upon us. Make a resolution. If you're praying zero, I'm going to pray one. If you're praying one, I'm going to pray three. If you're super desperate, your kids are crack addicts. If your children are got one foot in hell and one foot on a banana peel, get on your knees and say, Blessed Mother, I'll give you four for all of Lent. And you will see miracles. You will see conversions. Your own soul will be so filled with peace. You'll have the sense of the presence of the Virgin Mary all throughout the day. I cannot promote this enough. And it's not, I'm not promoting it out of faith. I'm promoting it out of confidence. 
because I've seen it work everywhere I go that this happens. Never was it known that that soul was left unaided. Try it. If you're listening to this radio program right now, it's not an accident. There's no coincidences in the providence of God. God has put this on your heart. I, I encourage you, try it for all of Lent. Amen. Let's put the challenge out there. Will you join me in praying at the very least three yes. sets of mysteries every day? Could you do four? Yes. Let's do four. I mean, you could, but let's start with three. I want to know, can you do three mysteries every single day during the holy season of Lent? That's the challenge my family's taking up. And I want to know if you will take it up, too. Let us know in one of the comment feeds on the live videos, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. Find us there with Gabriel, Gabriel Castillo. Gabby After Hours, you're amazing. God bless you, my friend. God bless you, man. God Thanks love for you. having Thanks me for on. Being with you. us today. Keep up the good work. Check them out. Gabby After Hours on YouTube. YouTube.com at Gabby After Hours. I put the links in the video feeds. That's going to do it for this week. It's been a great week of shows. Be sure to uh, subscribe to our uh, A Catholic Take podcast. I would be so grateful. And we'll see you back here on Monday. God bless you. God love you. Or in the after show. Thank you for listening to this podcast brought to you by the Station of the Cross.com, a listener funded nonprofit organization. If this podcast has helped you in your spiritual journey, please prayerfully consider donating at the Station of the Cross.com by calling 1 877 888 6279 or through our free iCatholic Radio mobile app.